So yeah, I'm still down in Snowdon, but we're still testing golf clubs wherever we go, and very soon we'll be back down at Conway Golf Club, and again, we've got the data to back any testing up, and that'll come from Floor Golf. Uh, yeah, behind me is Dolbarden Castle, for those of you who are interested, uh, dates back to the 1200s, maybe before that, 40 feet high, 40 feet wide, 8 feet in width of the walls, that's how thick that thing is built. It's a great vantage point. Anyway, back on to what we're here for. The two Mizuno long irons. GPX forged and a GPX long metal. Different players. But they are far any different. I'm going to quickly move because the camera's about to blow up. So don't forget, in the 921 range, there are four different styles. And to be honest with you, you could choose any one of them for, for all reasons that will suit different levels. But it's the idea of the potentially mixing up two different sets, possibly even three different sets. And I think this is a perfect combination by where people will be looking at the forged and mixing it with a hot metal or the hot metal pro. But at which point would you change? Where do you start to change and switch those irons out? And I think this is the interesting bit. So certainly five iron, four iron, I think there could be a big difference in sort of how the forged performs as opposed to the hot metal. But there's only one way to find that out. It's get off this old Barden castle and go with some golf balls. 921 forged. Let's see what this one can do. Ooh, straight out of the blocks. Ball speeds off this are incredible. Oh, sat on my eyes. Okay, 921 hot melt. A bit more meat on the bone. And a bit more law. A bit stronger. Let's see what this does. That's all bit. take a little bit of shelter and uh, there's not much out here very exposed at Conway Golf Club and it is a windy day um, but in terms of four iron performance what have I seen out here on the golf course well in all honesty there is there is little to split them the one thing that is more it, I think it resonates more outside than it does inside in a bay in a fitting bay and I know we all get to try clubs re most of us when you get custom fit it's in an indoor facility and the sound is totally different i think from indoor to outdoor and again the sort of softness of the forge leans me more towards that and i don't really see a great deal in terms of performance difference what i will say the first shot of the day when i arrived on the first tee sort of no warm-up and i had to pick one of the four irons out i must admit i did go for the the hot metal pro because of that sort of bulk and mass that gave me a little bit more confidence mentally to think I've got a bit more help here so that's where I'll kick things off. Right so back inside for uh, for dry ball data are we in focus we're in focus uh, yeah so I'm going to get straight in and get the numbers in front of you now interesting out there on the course uh, dry ball data this is what it had to say right so yeah, well there's absolutely I mean nothing to split them to be quite honest with you despite the loft which was the biggest surprise because in all honesty what i thought was going to happen was that i'd get to a this stage whereby dry ball data would now tell me that the hot metal went quite a bit further and then you're looking at so so that, that which is okay but it's not it's not the be all and end all in terms of going a bit further because don't forget this whole video is about whether or not you can now a lot of people looking to match and blend sets together 
So you've got that issue then about whether or not it would fit in in terms of your yardage gaps once you get into that top end of the bag. Uh, but anyway, back to the dry ball data. You'll see 3587 spin. I mean, for a game improvement iron on a four iron, that spin number's fantastic. 205 yard carry, 11.9 launch, 76 peak height. And then you look at the uh, same numbers for the, uh, for the forge, better spin number, launching that little bit lower. Um, I mean, there's just, I mean, what I would say in that is the variables that are in there are down to my swing characteristics. No more than that, you're splitting airs over what is a small amount of shots. What I will say is this, and again, notice both out on the course and in dry ball data, just look at the dispersion in terms of inside. Um, so much tighter with the forged club. And again, you know, it's a small number of shots, so I can't really say that that would happen over sort of 50 shots, whether or not that would continue to be the case. But I did find out on the course as well that it was a little bit more consistent in terms of where I got it. So for me, the, the key of this is, there's no great difference for me. And I'm surprised because I know that a lot of the pros are using the sort of hot metal pro in those longer irons. So I was expecting to see the yardage gains. I personally didn't find it. The overriding factor for me would have been that I preferred the feel still in the Forge Club, even at that um, lower end of the bag. And I know the chromoloy kicks in, in terms of those longer irons as well, but still the feel and sound was far, far better. And it wasn't, there was no gain anyway, but, it, but for me, the more small compact head, the overall look and profile of the Forge suited my eye that bit better. So based on the fact there was nothing really to gain at all in terms of performance, then for me, I would choose to go all the way through the bag with the Forge clubs uh, on this occasion. I've got no more really to say about that. That's the end of the video. It's done. What I will say is this, I'm going to throw one more curveball into the ring, and that is that the video I did last week in terms of the P770, P790, I've done, I did a head-to-head -head between the P770 and the Forge, 921 Forge. And with that, I would have said that the overriding factor was that the 921 Forge was better feeding and it would have led me that way. If I put the long irons to the test, and if this was a head-to-head -head between the P770 and the 921 Forged, I'd have been itching towards the P770 and the longer irons because the ball flight in the five iron that I tested, that long iron test that we did last week, if you haven't seen it, go back and watch it. The ball flight uh, in terms of what I achieved in those longer irons was so, so good. It didn't quite happen the same way with the four iron in hand of uh, either of these two clubs today. So that helps absolutely nobody in the buying decisions because what I'm saying is buy half a set of P770s and then mix it up with a P, uh, with the 9214s in the bottom end of the bag. And uh, clearly that's not uh, an option that you're likely to choose. So uh, I'm just saying, I'm just saying what I found, but there you go. I don't know why I've thrown that into the mix. I've just uh, confused everybody, but including myself, but that's what I found. It was a noticeable difference, them 770s and the long irons. Unreal in terms of, I, w I just wish that I'd seen a bit more of that in either of these four irons, because for me then, they've literally wiped the floor in terms of the best irons that are out there on the marketplace right now. But as it happens, there's still a bit of improvement to be made in those uh, in the 921 range for me. Interesting. Right, see you soon.